Welcome everyone to episode 21 of Up Too Late Podcast. You didn't do the clap thing. Oh, I didn't. Shh, no one has to know <laughs> what I'm talking about with that. Uh, I'll do it later, it's fine. Alright. Um, we're not drunk. Unfortunately. You know, even though some of us are forgetting important things about the podcast. Hey, I'm Cap. I'm Liz. There you go. Um, we've got some news... April Fools was recently, so there's a lot of stuff that happened then. Uh, I'm sure that you guys seen have seen some ridiculous things. Sure. Um, one of the most ridiculous ones that I saw, you know, Takashi's Challenge. Yes. The old game based on. Wasn't it Castle? Takashi's Castle was the show. Mm-hmm. And there's a game that was based on it. Okay. Uh, some. Some people were like, hey, Takashi's Challenge VR. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you wear, like, a suit, mm. like, a, like, tuxedo. It's, like, VIP VR mm. that's got all these sensors in it. There's gloves. There's, like, a breathing mask thing because there's a karaoke part, so it's got to, like, capture your voice. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a fighting game in it, so after the fight... There's a Hollywood makeup artist that puts makeup on you so you look like you're beaten up. It's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. And for the, like the one of the games is just like waiting an hour without doing anything, so they yeah. give you violin music and a comfy chair. Interesting, That's neat. It's uh, pretty great. If that was a VR game, I don't know if I would buy it, but I would certainly consider. It. I mean, it comes with a makeup artist, so. That's true. It probably costs like way more than the VR kit itself, though. Mm. Which seems like an unwise investment. <laughs> I mean, if you got the money. Yeah, I guess. Uh, what did you guys see for April Fools that uh, tickled your fancy? Nothing. I Nothing. hate April Fools. Wow. Okay. I stay off the internet. Wow. The best I can. <laughs> so. I like uh, I like to think geeks, hot pocket. Uh, sleeping bag. Oh, yes. That's pretty neat. Yeah, sleep in a hot pocket. Yeah, it means you're the gross insides of a hot pocket. <laughs> that's... Yeah, that's an unpleasant thought. Yeah. Not microwave safe, I think, at that I point. I hope not. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed Discord's uh, April Fool's thing, where it was their Discord... What was it called? It was like... They were doing coffee. Mm-hmm. It was uh oh I can't remember what it was called but anyway oh, they, yeah, yeah yeah they had that they had this video where yeah, the they just froth. yeah they just froth the heck out of it it was amazing they had like premium brew it was so good yeah there was some great April Fool's stuff this year arguably the best April Fool's joke was getting to watch the first episode of uh, Rick and Morty season three yeah yeah that was pretty good and uh, the joke just keeps on going. Mm-hmm. With the Szechuan sauce. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Still weirded out that no one's talking about Shoney's being a real restaurant. Shoney's is a real restaurant? Shoney's is yeah. a real restaurant. There's 150 of them in the southern United States. Wow. That's amazing. I yeah. can't say I've ever heard of Shoney's, but I've it's never a, been to the southern It's US. a real restaurant. Wow. It's real. <laughs> Why is no one freaking out about that? Well, wouldn't it be amazing if they had Szechuan sauce, but no one had realized? Well, I mean, you can go get Szechuan sauce. You just I know, can't but get like, the Mulan one. But, like, what if it was all just a distraction tactic to get you to not go and get Shoney's Szechuan sauce? I mean, I don't know. Because you'd probably take your Mulan Szechuan sauce to Shoney's. Yeah, but, the, but Shoney's is, a, is an all-American type restaurant, mm-hmm. so they probably, uh, don't yeah, they probably don't have Asian anything flavors. Like that. No. Is that how you say that word? What? Szechuan? Yeah. Yes. What did you think it was? Nothing. It's not, it's, it's not important. <laughs> Tell us. No, Szechuan. Szechuan? Yes. D- the Z is after... The, the Z is at the start right after the S. So? What's your point? So why would it be in I don't know. the second syllable? <laughs> I can't pronounce words. Did you not Szechuan. see the episode? No. You should watch oh, the episode. They pronounced it a million times. They've said it so many times. I know, but maybe even with was burps part like midway joke. through, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, oh Marty. <laughs> yes. I need the sauce. <laughs> yeah. That's his uh, character arc. Yeah. He needs the sauce. Yeah, this is what this is all about. It's all about the sauce, Marty. <laughs> yes. I don't care if it takes ninety-seven more years. We're gonna get that sauce, Marty. 
Yeah. Uh, so something. Boy. 97 more years of that show. Can't wait. Yeah. I hope I live that long. I gotta see the finale. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. When he finally gets it. Oh, yeah. Uh, something that's not as an April Fool's joke is there's a new fighting game coming out for Genesis. Actually, hold on. There's one more thing about Rick and Morty that I oh. no one seems to be talking about also, uh. which is Jerry's out of the show now. Yeah, I guess. Was that but like, to what end? extent? What? Like, are we sure that he's not in the show? I mean, Rick's out against him, so there's probably not a good chance we'll see too much of him. Yeah, but like, he might still be there, just like, not Yeah, see, that's them, the thing. No one's know? talking about this. Yeah, that's true. It's crazy. Why do they People distract us? People are just us? so yeah, distracted with the Szechuan sauce. Yeah, just see what's going on on eBay with that stuff. With Szechuan People sauce. People are selling oh. pictures and drawings. And of t-shirts. This, and t-shirts of the sauce. Yeah. And they're selling for money. Yeah. Someone did a painting, which was a nice enough painting of the sauce. So, like, it's just the, you know, the top of it, like, with the wrapper thing. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, this that sold. I don't know if it's, like, how far is now, but it was at, like, 50 to some dollars oh, Canadian in bids. Yeah. And someone did a crappy drawing with, like, a pen, and they scratched stuff out even. Like, they misspelled ingredients, and then they scratched it out, and they started again underneath. And that had, uh, like, that had bids. Yeah. That had some bids. What was that eBay uh, eBay item that people were thinking that it was maybe by one of the makers? Oh of the yeah, show? some people think that it was uh, probably Harmon or Royland that uh, did it. One, uh, there's a bid for a picture of the sauce, but the description of it sounds very much like it's them, and it's for charity. Yeah. Also, and the bids are at like two thousand dollars. Huh. Yeah. And they're so sort of like a. So, like, I'm going to sign it and everything and get riggedy wrecked and stuff like that. Yeah. I think any meme roundup of, like, the year or month is going to have to include Szechuan sauce. I feel like that's going to just be over by the time this podcast is even released. Maybe. <laughs> but, like, it's just... I mean, but it's, like, so big yeah, yeah. that I'm sure people are going to remember. Yeah. Some some random guy opened a Kickstarter for the sauce, he wants. I don't know what he's to trying. bring it back. Or I know something. what he's trying to do with that, really. <laughs> I mean, it says the ingredients on the container. Though. Yeah, I don't know why no one's just trying to make that. Like, because you could just make Szechuan sauce anyway. Yeah, I know, but like, just make uh, go heavy on the corn syrup. Like, that's about it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just make it more McDonald's by adding corn syrup. Yeah, exactly. Like the first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. So just yeah. get some of that and mix mm. it with Szechuan things. <laughs> That are also listed. Yeah. But you probably need, like, some of those ingredients are probably hard to obtain unless you're, like, someone who makes, in, yeah. like, industrial yeah. amounts of foodstuffs. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. I'm seeing so many videos of people making the sauce, but they don't even know what it tastes like. <laughs> so it's like, what are they trying to do So here? they're just making something and hope it tastes good. Yeah, they're like, this is a Szechuan sauce, but I'll, I put a bunch of sugar in it because McDonald's. And, like, it, it's pretty good. Cool. <laughs> wow. Maybe this is what it tastes like. I don't know. Well, there you go. I'm just, I'm sure that next time I see my family, they're going to be like, what's this about Szechuan sauce? Because they just yeah. hear about the weirdest stuff sometimes. Yeah. When it gets big enough. Yeah. Also, yeah. it's funny. I checked the uh, Mulan kids meal toys from the same, you know, mm -hmm. promotion. They they're all worthless still. <laughs> so it sucks for anyone that was like, oh, uh, I hope these are worth more now. That's too bad. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah, it's weird because people are just calling it Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce, and I'm like, <laughs> but it's Mulan. It yeah, says it's it on Mulan, the pack. Yeah, Mulan, guys. Uh... I hadn't heard of this before right now. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's a whole thing, I it's guess. It's a uh, big thing. I know, I understand that it's a big thing. I just hadn't heard about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, Rick says that this is his whole character arc. Like, yeah. he, they're in his memories at one point in the episode, and he goes out of his way to go to McDonald's, how he remembers it, in 98. Yeah. So he can get some so of the dipping sauce. Get, yeah. And then this alien who's in his memories tries it, and he's like, you know what, this is really good, and stuff like that. <laughs> And, uh... He eats all the Szechuan sauce, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't and, think Rick gets to eat any of it in his memory. Yeah, but, like, he can do it any time. It's his own memories. Yeah, but, like, he he was, like, he can't experience it the same way, you know? Yeah, but, like, I don't know. I, I feel like we're picking he, apart nothing He can here. remember it, <laughs> but he can't taste it again. Like yeah, but he remembers how it tastes. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. it's really just him 
experiencing I mean, there's a reason, there's a reason he went to go get some, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Something. So, uh... The other Genesis game, though. Yeah, something that's not an April Fool's joke. There's a new Brawler game coming out on the Genesis. That's right, the Genesis. Yeah, that Sega Mega Drive. Yeah. From. Vroom. Yeah, these people, um, I, I think they make cartridges. Yes, they do. Yeah, and so they're they're using one that can store a lot more data, so it's going to be like the biggest Genesis game, basically. Yeah, yeah it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's huge. huge. And uh, I don't know, it looks interesting. I don't have much to say about fighting games. Yeah, and so well, maybe... isn't it a beat em up? I think so. Yeah. Either way, it looks sweet. Yeah. Trailer's awesome. They certainly have the aesthetic down. Mm -hmm. The trailer is like, it almost hurts the eyes to watch it. They're also releasing a fight stick to go with it. Oh, yes, they are. It uh, looks pretty cool. It's, it's yep. a pretty big fight stick. Uh, yep. It's good stuff. Yeah, I'm probably going to get that. Mm. Sounds very involved. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. People are going to buy it. Yeah, there's definitely awesome. some people who are going to purchase that. Yeah. Um, yes. There's some pretty cool, cool things being done. Like, uh, like a Switch stand that looks like an arcade cabinet, because why not? Just pop your Switch in there, and it's like you're playing on an arcade cabinet that's really tiny. Yay. For no apparent reason. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that Konosuba game we mentioned last time? Yeah. They finally gave us some details about what it's gonna be. Okay. Is it gonna be a Konosuba game? It's gonna be... So the main guy's name is Kazuma, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, and he's got this skill that he uses, which is steel. And basically he puts out his hand and then uses the skill and then, and then he thefts an item. Wow. And a lot of the time in the anime it's panties because it's funny. Yeah, sure. And so, in the game, essentially, it's being called uh, Konosuba, God's Blessing on this Wonderful World, Judgment to this Greedy Game. And he's basically got a curse on him that makes him accidentally steal all the panties in town. And he has to find the owners of the panties to return them. But if you give the wrong panties to someone, they get really mad at you. <clears throat> so it's... Uh, <laughs> Look forward to that one, Nick. It's going to be on uh, PS4 and PS Vita this summer in Japan. Of course it's on Vita. The Vita's getting games? Yeah, they the get... The Vita's not dead? They get games in Japan. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're only perf games, though. Yeah, like this one, <laughs> basically. But yeah, so he's got this curse on him where he's accidentally all the panties. It's an awkward predicament, you know? I hate when that happens, dude. Like, oh man. I got all these panties now. What am I supposed to do? This is the huge bonfire. <laughs> yeah, but then no one's got any panties. It's not my problem. Wow. What if you, like, stole all the panties in town, like, including ones in stores, so people can't even go get more, you know? Sounds like a fun time. They could start wearing <laughs> boxers or briefs. I don't yeah. care. All right. Like I said, it's not my problem. It'd be kind of weird, though. There'd be too much room for someone with, like, that setup, you know? There's too much room. Um, other games that are interesting. Someone made a ROM hack where it's, like, Yoshi's Island and Sonic put together. Mm -hmm. So, basically, you're Yoshi's Islanding in Sonic World. Is it, like, actually okay constructed? Yeah. Like, That's it looks good. like a Sonic game, but you're Yoshi, and you have eggs, and you've got Sonic on your back as a baby. Oh, nice. And he's not super annoying when you lose him. Oh, that's cool. He's pretty quiet. You can also get Tails, too, on nice. your back. Nice. Sonic and Tails and Knuckles. Yeah, it's actually pretty good Two from what I've heard, knuckles, but... but it's kind of hard to find because it got shut down. Yeah, as long as it's better than Somari. Somari? Yeah. It's like a super old uh, hack that someone did that was like uh, Mario and Sonic. Huh. And it was, like, really bad. Oh, dear. Like, it was okay, but it was, like, also horrible, so it wasn't okay. Oh, my. The, the, they, they had really stiff sprites, so you'd go around a loop and you'd basically just be, like, <laughs> just, you just didn't care. Yeah. Pretty much, but he would do it anyway. Yoshi looks kind of silly when he goes on a loop. 
Oh yeah, I'm sure. Well, actually, he looks pretty okay. But then when there's those like those parts where it's like a squiggly thing that's like more horizontal. Yeah. And you're like, oh, Sonic yeah. like turns oh. like, in three dimensions. <laughs> Yoshi just kind of doesn't. Nice. <laughs> okay. He just keeps going. There you go. That's fine though, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Why not? But yeah, it looks pretty good. People were pretty hyped about it. If we can find a way to get it, we'll po- probably put a link in the show notes to so check that out because it looks pretty good. Yeah. I'm not even sure if it's a ROM hack of Sonic or of Yoshi because it's like. It's got, like, the mechanics of Yoshi, but the world of Sonic. It's very weird. Well, usually it's a lot easier to change the world than change the entire physics of a thing. Yeah, exactly. But it's like he goes fast and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can accelerate a lot easier that's, than you can. True. Oh, hey, these are entirely yeah. new physical mechanics. Oh, hey, mechanics. throwing eggs is a thing in Sonic now. Yeah, I feel like that'd be complicated. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Well, there you go. And, you know, uh, you make sure that you guys have uh, have, a, have an officially, like, a ROM that you didn't pirate and stuff to have. Yeah, somehow buy that from both companies. <laughs> you can <laughs> Good luck. Uh, get, get the game, rip the ROM onto your computer. Make by... your own ROM hack. <laughs> I mean, the hack isn't... Anyways... Uh, so Mad Cats, beloved Mad Cats, oh. creator of um, Mad Cats. everything terrible, creator of some some weird things, but also some pretty useful things. Like, I mean, they made like adapters and stuff that saved my ability to play games several times. Yeah, and I mean that was a time when not everyone did that stuff, so it was good. Yeah, they were the ones. Very to do convenient. That. Um, uh, they they filed for bankruptcy, so they, so that's over. Yes, very much. It's quite oh, sad. Oh no. Oh no. I know oh. you hate the heck out of them. I but mean, like, they're an institution. Yeah. Or well, I guess they were. Mad Cats, like everyone who played games back in the day knew about Mad Cats. Yeah, but no one liked them. I like them. They're the maker of like little brother controllers. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was that little brother, okay? Leave me be. God. I mean, I don't know. They've just, yeah, they were just always there. Yeah. They were always there to lend a hand and give you some controllers and adapters and stuff. Yeah, they were like some some not so, you know, skilled person offering you help all the time. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like, oh, like, like thanks, that's, that's good. Like, it's, Appreciate the effort. It's better than nothing, but, you know, anyways, thanks. Yeah. Um... So, Microsoft finally released details about oh. the Project Scorpio I've and its specifications. Bit. And it's, um, I mean, it basically just one-ups the PS4 Pro on pretty much everything. It's like just a little bit more for everything. But if you've got like a PC, you've pretty much already got something better anyways. I mean, that's how it's always been. I know, it's just it's funny just, They though, were like, oh, like, this thing is like... They're this like, thing... this thing's got so many freaking teraflops, guys. Like, you can't this, even believe like, it. This thing is so powerful, it was more powerful. It'd run on diesel and have a ripcord <laughs> to start it. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is just going to destroy things. I mean, like, a... you're going to need to have your windows open to play this machine because it's so powerful. I mean, with a name like Project Scorpio, they're trying to sound like super duper cool. And it's like, dude, it's the most powerful console ever, but like... But, like, the Sega Saturn was at the time. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really say much. I mean, I'm pretty sure my computer's already better than this thing, and yeah, it's my computer's, pretty old, so. My computer's better than that, and it's, like, a six or seven years was, old. Yeah. It was, like, a gaming laptop, six or seven years old, and yeah. it has the worst i7 in it. Yeah. Like, unless you want a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray drive... Like, yeah, that's cool. But like, I'm pretty sure that yeah. the uh, Xbox One normal has it, anyways. No, it's got a regular Blu-ray. Oh, okay. The One S has 4K. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what the difference is. I just find it so silly because it's like Microsoft. You can play almost all the Xbox games on your PC anyway. So like, just get a PC. Xbox is on your PC. Was. I've talked to a lot of people about this at work. Yeah. Cause they're filthy console peasants. Oh boy. 
and their main argument is like, I want to sit on my couch to play video games. You can do that! That's what I tell them. <laughs> and they're like, oh, but it's too complicated. No. no, it's not! Is it more like you could just buy some cables or you could buy a whole console that just has more cables anyway? Yeah. Come on, guys. I don't get it. Ah. But I want to play with my favorite controller. Well, you can! You can! <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, it doesn't have Halo. All right, it doesn't have Halo. Oh, You're right. Oh, God. It's ridiculous. People are ridiculous. They are. Who's you know who you are, people at work. <laughs> yeah. Um, Res Zero is an anime that I recommended previously. Boy, are they selling toys of that in Japan right now. Oh yeah, I'm sure. So much. There's like two of them that are like the same but different hair color. Well, that's because there's two characters. Yeah. There. Oh, there <laughs> sure is. They're twins. Yeah, there is. They're twins. Oh, I tell you. They've got very different personalities, though. Oh, they both sell, though. Do they the part toys. their hair on opposite sides. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yes. the classic twin sign. <laughs> um, they're making a a mobile VR game where you can rest your head on the lap of one of those twins. <laughs> is that really a game? That's what the world has come to now. <laughs> is that really a game? Apparently. Is there mechanics? I... Is... There's like... I think there's like scenes that can also play out. I remember... Like I saw some screenshots where like one of them was on like a bed lying next to you and you're like looking over at her. But like, yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't mean that. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's really I, a game. That's how I feel about it. Just yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's pretty special. People will do anything these days. <laughs> um, well, that's just horrendous, but all right. Yeah. My favorite MMO shooter of all time uh, has announced that they're going to have a sequel. What? Destiny. I don't understand. <laughs> I was making a joke because I don't like it. Oh, I see. They, they're going to have a sequel because... Wait, you mean the first one came out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It I came th out and was a little underwhelming and oh, yeah. buggy and stupid. Oh, right. There and was the now health... they're making another one. Yeah. Woo! It's going to be so good. Coming to PC. Yeah. Yeah. Because I guess, like, they haven't milked the... Like, they've completely run out of ideas for expansions or something or what? Mm, yeah, pretty much. I Who think knows? it's a bit silly. You don't have to make a sequel to an MMO unless that MMO is like 10 years old, dude. It's ridiculous. Money. It's yeah. ridiculous. They're g isn't it like a subscription game anyway? I don't know. I, I don't remember. But anyway, I'm sure they're making money. They just gotta chill. Are they gonna run both? Like, oh, it's gonna be a mess. In other lighter news, there's... Lighter news than that? Yeah, lighter news. Ouch. There's a... Zippo making ripples in the market right now. Ha ha! <laughs> hey! What? Zippo, the lighters. Yeah. The lighter news. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you got it. What? <laughs> there's a dating game where your girlfriend turns into an alpaca. Oh, okay. You mean there's like, not... It's not already one of those? Or wait, maybe I'm thinking of a horse. At, at this point, I'm That's not That's a even... mobile different game. Oh, okay. That's where you take care of a horse with oh, a human okay. face. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a hell of a And he, there's like scenes where he pins you to the wall, mm. but he's a horse. Yeah. So. Hopefully that'll be in Project Scorpio. Hey. Oh, God. I think that's going to just stay on the app market and never leave because it's horrifying. It's a very special game. But yeah, your girlfriend turns into an alpaca. Which sounds really bizarre. It, I, it, <laughs> but like, for some reason they drew the alpaca with a super flat face. So it looks really bad anyway. Because <laughs> like, alpacas, they've got snouts. They've got a long nose. Yeah, Japan would know that. Why did they make it a flat face? It looks really silly. It makes it more relatable. It's just, she plays like the violin, and like, like how? You, it's, well, it's very silly. I'm dying over here. You're dying. That's just the worst. Yeah. Uh, in Splatoon 2, they finally talked about Lil Judd. 
His name is Lil Judd, I guess. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they didn't really say much. They just are like, hey, it's a Lil Judd. This is a Lil Judd. He's a Lil. Yeah. He's a real Lil. It's ironic because he's smaller, and yet I'm calling him Judd Hirsch because I already was calling the other one Judd Nelson, and I'm going to change his name now. <laughs> Judd Hirsch. Is he bigger than Judd Nelson? Yeah, I would say so. Oh, yeah? I don't really know who either of those people are. Uh, Judd Nelson was in The Breakfast Club. He was the bad boy. Oh, yeah? And uh, Judd Hirsch is the guy from Taxi, the show Taxi. Not either of the movies Taxi, but the show the Taxi. The show that had, like, um... The awesome theme song that I can't play at all. I can't remember I'm not it. not going to do it. It had, um, Danny DeVito in it. Yes, yes, yeah. he was the the guy who would uh, you know tell he was them like where the they taxi had to go. Yeah. Boss guy. Yeah, he was behind the cage thing a lot. Yeah, yeah. standing probably on a box so you could see beyond the counter because yeah. he's short. Yeah, Judd Hirsch is the the friendly guy that yeah. everyone always talked to in that show. I see. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He's still Little around. Judd. He was in uh, most recently that I can think of. He was in Independence Day Two, which was horrible. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunate for him. Yep. Yep. Anyone remember Metabots? I do. Mm. I love Metabots. Yeah. I... It's one of the best GBA games of all time. Meta... No one knows what I'm talking about. Metabots I know what you're talking so about, good. and I have to disagree with you on that. Not not like the fighter, like the RPG. I, I haven't he, played He that doesn't one. like RPGs anyways. It doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure they have that at uh, some nearby place that has That old place games. that makes you dizzy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, Someday uh, someone's gonna figure that out, and then they're gonna, like, break into our apartment. We didn't say where we live. Not yet. Well, you just <laughs> said what kind of building it was. I mean, you can call a lot of things an apartment. I call my place an apartment. Yeah. And it's... A lot of people wouldn't call that an apartment, but yeah. it's an apartment. There you go. Uh, Metabots. Metabots. Yeah, it's the 20th anniversary. Yeah. I feel so old. Yeah. God. I mean, to be fair, it's the 20th anniversary, like, in Japan, so it probably took a little while to get here. But dang, I feel old. Yeah, they've got some special goods for sale that are, like, real expensive, but they're super cool, because you know how there's, like, the two main robots? Metabi and, uh, Rikusho? Or is that the name of the dude? I don't remember. I I don't think the dude's name is (laughs) Metabi. No, I mean Rikusho. I I don't remember if... They've got the medals for sale in a fancy box. Ooh. It looks so cool. Mm, That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. It costs like... How much was it? Said it somewhere. It's 8,100 yen, which is like $80 plus. Probably do more like 100 yen. Too bad. But it's still pretty ouch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like Metabots that much. Yeah. But it's so cool though. It's pretty neat. I hope that they, like, release a game for the 20th. That'd be cool. They should re-release the RPGs. That would be cool. Just where the bomb. Yeah. Imagine, like, they, they could put that on Virtual Console or something. I think it already is. Oh, snap. I gotta look into well, that. There you have it. Oh, boy. I'm excited now. Good stuff. Bayonetta might be getting ported to PC. Why? Uh, there was, on April Fool's, there was an 8-bit Bayonetta game that was available for free on PC. Mm. And inside the game, there's a countdown to April 11th at some point in time. So there may be an announcement relating to something about Bayonetta on the PC. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting. We're gonna have to report on that next time if it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, I don't see the point. It's already on, like everything else. It's already on a lot of things. Time. What if there was like a new main Bayonetta game? Wouldn't be on PC, I don't imagine. Bayonetta MMO, let's go. Oh god. Imagine all those like Bayonetta girls. They would be horrifying oh, to be that many. Yeah, that... She's so like anatomically... Let's say reskin, but it's all hair. <laughs> yeah, really. It would be like it would be like when you're customizing your character, there'd just be, like, one big collapsible tab that's just hair, and then it's just, like, a bajillion different things. Yeah, it's just the one tab other than, like, eyes and mouth and stuff. Yeah. It would just be, like, mouth options, pouty, sassy, and then hair options, 
for everything else. Yeah. Yeah, and then there'd be, be there'd be eyes, there'd be sensual, <laughs> super sensual. <laughs> yes. Wink. Just wink. Just perma-wink. Just perma-wink. <laughs> just all yeah. the time. But, like, your mouth might not fit the Yeah, your wink. mouth is pouty. <laughs> it's just, it's just pouty a pouty wink. pouty wink. I can't even attempt to make that face. It's horrifying. Uh, yeah, so that would be interesting to see if there's, uh... Any Bayonetta news? Because, mm. um, I don't know, there hasn't been much activity in regards to Bayonetta recently that I'm aware. Other than, like, the Wii U sequel. Um, didn't they, like, port it to something somewhat I recently? I think so. Hmm. In any case. Because, like, yeah, Nintendo pretty much produced that game anyway. <laughs> yeah. There's some game that looks pretty dang sick that's like monster... Well, people are saying it's like Monster Rancher and Rune Factory shoved together. But, I mean, Rune Factory was already kind of... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Monsters. So it's a bit silly. Anyway, the this there's this game in the Square Enix Collective, which is like a platform where you can support games that are being made, uh, called Re-Legend, and it's like this cutesy... RPG thing where you tame monsters and you can play multiplayer but like also you're just like farming all the time and stuff hmm. and collecting these monsters and befriending villagers and it's super cute and looks pretty nice and pleasant some more screenshots of it yeah so I'm pretty hyped for that it's gonna be on PC uh you know if it gets completed. I'm not sure how Square Enix Collective works. I probably should have looked that up first. Just but just hey! Like Kickstarter for Square Enix? I, yeah, I'm, it's I'm not sure that's how it works. But I'm not sure how it works at all. Mm. So there you go. Um, I actually got Snake Pass. Oh yes, you got Snake Pass. I saw you playing that. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. That's good. How does it feel mechanically? Like a yeah, snake? That was, that was my concern. It's super cool. It's very much you're just driving around a snake. Huh. You're so just it's like, driving around a yeah. snake? Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> but That's yeah, no, it's really freaking cool. Like you can, uh, like you actually need to like learn to, you know, twist around stuff to, you know, move forward and stuff. So it's not just like you press a button and you do it? You have to no, actually like... No, it's, it's like you need to like, you can... Basically, the only controls you have is go forward, and uh, you can hold the A button, and your head will go up. And if you let go, it'll just go down. Automatically? And, sort of like breathing? Yeah, and then, you know, you can control around, and uh, there's, I think it's the second L button you use to, like, tighten your grip on stuff. So, like, if you're coiled around something, you can, like, tighten and, like, then you need to, you know, you can kind of, like, wiggle your head around and try and reach a thing. <laughs> well, you know, the back of you will still be holding on. Interesting. Yeah, it's really crazy. It was, it's a, it's an interesting learning curve, I'll tell you that. What does the, like, bird do? Oh, yeah, the bird also, uh, there's a, like there's a, a hummingbird, hummingbird that yeah. tags along and is annoying. <laughs> it's annoying? Yeah, it's like, oh, you use the, this button to do the thing you already know how to do that I mm -hmm. keep telling you to do. Mm -hmm. But, like, beyond that, if you push, I think, Y, you're, um, yeah, it basically just kind of, like, grabs the back of you and tries to, like, lift you up. Grabs your butt. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of like, you it's know, in like butt. the it's like in the three quarters of the bag, you know. Yeah, but I mean, a snake's butt isn't right at the end of his tail. No, it's right at the end. No. no that's how that works. No. It's just There's a hole no in the back of a snake. There's no room for that. Yeah. Any, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, so anyways, it grabs you and like it tries to fly you up, but like it can only do so much. Uh -huh. It's like if the front of you isn't on something, it's going to just like, you know, you're just going to fall. The birds are real moody about this topic, because you're bad mouthing this bird guy. Yeah, but yeah, so uh, no, yeah, basically, it's sometimes it helps, sometimes it's just like, oh hey, what, that didn't do anything. Oh, <laughs> and then you're down the pit. Um, yeah, no, it's is basically. It, is it forgiving with the respawns? Oh yeah, I yeah. mean, there's uh, there's basically like, you know, kind of checkpoints all over. Oh okay. And as long as you go to a, you know, you can literally go grab an item next to you and then go back on the checkpoint and it saves you. So mm. 
if you go get like a really tough to get thing and you're like, oh, I don't want to lose that, then you go to the checkpoint and then you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's cool. pretty forgiving for that. Yeah. But uh, that being said, it's some of the challenges are pretty hard. Oh. And like you know, you need to learn pretty quickly how to coil stuff and. Yeah. Know, you practically have to climb just uh, vertically up poles sometimes. Wow. Yeah. So is it like, is there like a start and end point, or is it like a world you explore? Well, it's kind of like you're in these floating levels, like in those kinds of games. Okay. And you just kind of have to, you know, find all the things in it. And then, you know, once you get to the end, if you collect, you like goes, you know, different things to collect, like there's two of them that I don't think they do anything, but you collect them anyways. <laughs> and then there's the there's okay. three of them that is like the end of the level, so like you, you get those three things and you can go to the next level kind of thing. Okay. So if, if you really want to just shoot through the game for some reason, then you can do that. You just need to find the three things. And usually they're easy enough to get. Hmm. There's only one that I've had a hard time with. And it was because, like I said, I had to pretty much climb up a thing. Yeah. That was just basically a pole. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, a you, you get a you gotta really know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and also it's really cool. It's uh, it's got more controlled depth than I expected. Nice. And you know, if you just are going just in a straight line, you're not gonna be very fast. So you need to mm. like slalom like a snake. Interesting. You gotta Mario Kart yourself around. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting point. Mm. Yeah, no, it's really good. Nice. Um, letter top. Yes, any letter, letter time. time. Letter time! Wow. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Alright, so we got some letters from Nick. Well, we got some questions from Nick in a letter. Uh, hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. Also, I mean, you guys can send us questions or comments uh, via our email, which is up to late podcast at gmail.com, or our Twitter, which is at up to late pod. So Nick asks, what is the craziest thing you have stumbled upon while exploring as a kid? Whether it is whether it was in an old relative's basement or in the woods or in some caves, please share. As an example, he said, uh, him and his brother once found a PS1 game in a cave in the woods by their house. It was cracked, though, so it only sort of works. Sad face. <laughs> Just put some toothpaste on there. Toothpaste? Yeah. What? You're going to wreck your PlayStation. That that was a thing when we were yeah, kids. That's, like, that's, oh, an what? Old, uh, that's an old trick. <laughs> oh, your CDs you are scratched? Just put toothpaste on there. What? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the stupidest thing. I'm sure it doesn't work. Or rub a banana on there. That was the other one. Yeah, you basically wanted to fill those cracks. You wanted to buff it out with, uh, like, toothpaste. But... It didn't work. Yeah, no. obviously not. If that's not. what you're asking yourself. Obviously no. not. God. It's, like, but worse it, than an old wives' tale, because it's, it's kids. But it's cracked, though, not, like, scratched, so, like... Yeah, just use a lot of toothpaste. Anyways, <laughs> did we discover terrible. anything? I'm glad I didn't know you guys when I was a kid, because that sounds like the worst. I mean, advice. I never did that. Yeah, me neither. Like, it's I didn't terrible. even have disc games. So. No, but I'm saying you guys know that people would say that, yeah. so maybe you would say that to people. Yeah, but I mean, if you delete System 32, <laughs> your thing will run faster, you know? So much space on your computer for oh nothing. Oh my god, you guys. So what's the craziest thing that you found as a kid? I'm still thinking about it, but the, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't if, think of a thing. I don't know if it's the craziest thing I found. Oh, wait, well, there was this time where we found a dead body and it was Stand By Me, but that didn't happen because it's Stand By Me. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. The only thing I can remember right now was actually just like last summer, so not when I was a kid. But we went to um, this local nature park. Mm. Um, and we were walking on this trail that went along the river. And there was a lot of logging equipment, like really, really old logging equipment. And there was like a big, like two person saw that was just stuck in a tree. Mm. That was interesting. There was also like some humongous pipes and like a giant, like turbine thing mm. in the water. So that was pretty cool. Um, I don't know. We kind of just walked around the woods a lot when I was a kid. So we found like a lot of like homeless people's little shelters and things, just like tarps and garbage yeah. and whatnot. 
But we didn't get too close to it because our parents would be like, don't touch that. That might be, like, dangerous. So, yeah, we didn't really find much of anything, unfortunately. One time we were digging for digivices, though. Nice. What? I don't know why work? we thought there'd be digivices in the ground. All right. Did it work? We found, like, this really gigantic bug that looked super creepy, and then we ran away in horror. Nice. So, that sounds cool to me. Yeah, it was super fun. Horrifying. Very scary. I found, like, a very, like almost mint condition in the box NES in my oh, yeah. grandparents' attic. Hmm. And also like a penny gumball machine. Nice. It's like, it's real nice. It's made of metal and glass. Wow. Yeah. Well, those are worth That's money. pretty intense. Hmm. I just took them home. I was like, hey, <laughs> hey, can I take these? Okay, and I'm I was gonna sure. say, did you ask, jeez? <laughs> and I just took them home. I steal from my grandparents all the time. Yeah. I, they don't even know. <laughs> All their stuff just goes missing, and they're like, what? They can't even know. figure this computer stuff out, so they're never going to hear this. <laughs> yeah. What if we get so popular that we're on the radio somehow? No. We wouldn't okay. sell out like that. <laughs> All right, where, where are we? Shock jocks? Like, a, no. We're on a, we're on a morning zoo crew. Oh, like, what okay. are you talking about? All right. What did you... We don't, we don't make weird noises or anything Actually, in the middle I remember, of talking. I remember this one time... Uh, back when, in like seventh grade, I lived in another town for that year, and my friends and I, we went in the woods kind of close to the school, and there was this place that we called the Crystal Palace, just because there was a bunch of like CDs and broken glass everywhere, and it was like teepeed, and neat. I don't know, it just looked pretty neat. Okay. It was kind of weird, but we didn't really find anything interesting there, it was just kind of the place. So... Okay. Yeah. That was a tangent. Yeah. All right, cool. It sure was. Well, I, I mean, hope, it's related. It was in the woods. I hope that answers that question. Well, you didn't say anything. I, I have nothing. You have nothing? Like, I found a guitar pick in a parking lot one time. That's wow. the most exciting <laughs> thing I can remember. All right. You found a Lego man in the parking lot once when we were going Oh, yeah. Woods. It was a weird mishmash of stuff. Yeah. I, I, it's somewhere. It's, I don't know. Yeah. I basically just find is. stuff in parking lots. That's pretty much my whole deal. I think oh, I remember... Remember there was a uh, there was a small baseball place near where I lived when I was a uh, you know many young, mm -hmm. and we'd look under the bleachers and find coins sometimes. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good way like to a, find some change. Found like a twenty one time. I was like, oh Whoa. wow, how yeah. did that slip out of someone's pocket? I don't know. They probably had it like it's, in their hands or yeah. something, and then just lost. Yeah, they were of betting it. it on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> betting it on the kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. No, I have no idea. Was it uh, David who we know who found like a bunch of cars or something near his place? I don't know. Weren't you friends with David? Yeah, but I don't remember every single thing anyone's ever told me. Okay, fine. Jeez. <laughs> Inattentive much. All right. Uh, Nick also asks, what is the one thing that annoys the living crap out of you, but you have to deal with it on the regular? I April mean, Fool's. Uh, That's on once the regular? a year. It's <sighs> 22 <laughs> times now. Wow. I know what you're gonna say. What? Other people. Yeah, I guess so. People at your work and stuff. Those birds over there. You, they annoy the living crap out of you? Well, they don't annoy dead crap. That's ridiculous. They annoy you that much, though? Sure. Wow. Why not? Excuse me All for right. having pets. Yeah, okay. Good. You don't even have to do anything yeah, involving I them. I know. God. <laughs> Maybe you annoy the living crap out of me, God. All right, cool. Good to know. Have you ever found anything awesome at a yard sale? I mean, I literally used to live for that. Yeah, that was your summer life. Found a Letra 22, uh, 1960 something typewriter. Yeah, that's for pretty a nice. Dollar. It's like teal, has a carrying yeah. case. It's only got some of the paint missing. Yeah. Works really well. It's pretty good. There's two letters that stick, and that's it, and you can clean that off pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I'm just too lazy to do it. Yeah. I don't want to ruin it. Also, it's a different typeface than I've ever seen. It's a French layout. Oh, yeah. Layout. Hmm. So it's like a local well, typewriter for sure. Yeah. No, yeah, there was, uh, there was still the papers. of They did a repair on it once, and I have the receipt for it, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting find. And for yeah. a dollar, it's like... Yeah. Yeah. I was like, is this really a dollar? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't need a typewriter. I also found the complete Shakespeare for a dollar... 
Man, like, everyone's uh, just selling the coolest stuff for a dollar. Yeah, because it's days. weird stuff that no one needs. Yeah. Like, who needs the Shakespeare? I guess when there's no like, demand. Yeah. But I was like, oh, hell yeah, I need that. <laughs> and I mean, I found bags of NES games and, like, with zappers in them and, like, a controller for, like, I don't know, like, five bucks. Man. Stuff like that. I didn't really go to yard sales. I collect A and W mugs, so I'd find mm-hmm. those every once in a while. That's yeah. where I got three of the little kid ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah, hard to find. I think like the only thing I bought at a yard sale was like this little, um, it was like a little statue of a chicken mm. that was made of like <laughs> made of like reeds or something. Neat. I got it for my cousin because she really liked chickens, and I was like, she loves chickens, I'll give her this chicken thing. Mm. And then I don't think she liked it very much anyways, but that's okay. Oh well. <laughs> One time my brother got a uh, a clock that basically had a chicken on it, mm-hmm. like it was an old kind of clock. Yeah. And the the chicken would go around the clock. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Or no, wait, it would... You would peck on the seconds. Oh. Like every other second. On the seconds? God, that sounds really annoying. Yeah. Pretty sure, yeah. Wow. It was really cool. It was like metal inside of the clock. It was hmm. really cool. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Have you gone to yard sales and found interesting things? Like 90% of my Pokemon cards yeah. come from yard sales. Oh. Jealous. As a kid, my parents didn't let me buy cards. Mm-hmm. So like when I got a little bit older, I just bought a bunch of cards in yard sales. Nice. That's cool. Saved me a bunch of money. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, do you want 300 cars for like $2? Yeah, wow. sure, dog. Yeah, holy yeah, crap. Yeah, it sucks you don't find that anymore. Yeah, we only got like, when we were into cards briefly in our youth, we got like booster packs and, well, we got like a few booster packs sometimes, but aside from that, we would mostly just get like the starter decks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Actually... About yard sales. Mm -hmm. My friend, when we lived together in university, Mm. had this, like, little statue of, like, this saint. Okay. And it would, like, light up. You could, like, plug it in. It was a light. Okay. And we just took it, like, everywhere. (laughs) Okay. We called it Petit Jérémy. Petit Jérémy. Yeah. Wow. Okay, then. You do that. Light up saint. That's (laughs) interesting. We would just take places. Was it, like, was... Was the saint's name Jeremy? Probably not. It's in the lemon <laughs> picture. Who's to know? Oh. My friend's holding it in the lemon picture. I'll have to take a look at that lemon picture again. I I don't know how to find it, though. It oh. used to be on your Twitch page, and now it's not, I think. So. Did I remove it? I think so. Oh. Fine. Because on. you don't want to be a lemon anymore, anyway. apparently. It's not my aesthetic. <gasps> I'm, not, I'm not a lemon. You were a Christmas lemon, dude. <sighs> Uh, Nick's last question, final question of the day. Yes, it's very dramatic. Does anyone have a favorite crazy ass conspiracy theory? Pigeons being invented by the government to spy on us is my personal fave. Well, personally speaking, pigeons are badass and definitely not invented by the government. Uh, let me tell yeah, you a few things about pigeons sometimes. Yeah, they couldn't Nick. invent something that's so, you know, difficult to handle. Yes. I got a lot of things to say about pigeons. I won't say it now. I could start a whole podcast about pigeons if I wanted to. <laughs> start a second podcast about birds. That's so good. I'd need to find at least one other person who's really into birds, though. You know? I think my favorite conspiracy theory has to do with the new Coke. Yeah. At least my favorite one that I'm going to talk about here, because boy, do I know some. You have some that you can only talk about behind closed doors? I mean, one of them is very, you know, a lot of them deal with very, uh, you know, subject matter Mature themes. Sure. Intended but, for uh, an adult audience. But yeah, I'm going to just assume that everyone knows about the new coat, because boy, do I not like explaining that. But, okay, fine, I'm going to explain <laughs> I'm it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, 1984. Boy, I forgot what year. But anyways, it was some some, year, po- some point in the eighties. Coke decided way, way they wanted. The they decided that yeah, they decided they wanted to change the Coke formula, which is like this like oh, you can't change the Coke formula. It's like a secret and all that stuff, and yeah. like it still is. Blah blah blah. But anyways, they were like, screw it, we gotta change the Coke formula. Like nothing's sacred, including the formula. Let's wow. change it. Yes. So 
then they decided to do that and they started marketing that and everyone was like what the hell like you can't do that oh and then like it came out and like everyone was like oh this is stupid and, like three months later they started doing coke classic mm-hmm. which is the old coke anyways mm-hmm. so a lot of people are like there's a, there's the classic conspiracy is that everyone's like oh they made the new one so that everyone missed the old one so they could bring it back and make more money but the thing is, they were losing money anyway, so they decided to make the new Coke to try and be like, oh, it's like a new thing, mm-hmm. buy this, but then that backfired. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of backstory to it, like, they actually did some test marketing stuff, and they found that, like, 15% of people were, like, super pissed off about it, mm-hmm. but yet everyone else was, like, super Fine. into it, and, yeah. like, they tried old Coke, Pepsi, and the new Coke, and they mm-hmm. like, new Coke better most of the time, mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But that's the thing, the 15% were, like, super mad and stuff. And then they noticed yeah. if they all had them together, then everyone would pretty much be mad because mm-hmm. the mad ones would, you know, be of loud course. and all that stuff. Yeah, people and their loudness. So anyways, the, the, classic, loud. the classic theory is that the new Coke was made so they could just resell what they already had, mm-hmm. which it, it wasn't true. Mm-hmm. But this is where it gets cool. The When they brought back Coca-Cola Classic... Mm-hmm. That was when they decided to put in all of the Coke Classic uh, fructose corn syrup instead of sugar. Uh huh. So some people have a theory that that's why that's another aspect of why they decided to bring back Coke Classic so fast mm-hmm. was so that they could they could make it cheaper uh-huh. and that they would do it and no one would notice because everyone was so mad about the new Coke that anything close to the old one everyone would be like super happy about. Wow, that's something. Yeah. Now, yeah. they already had some places that they had high fructose corn syrup instead of sugar, but yeah. that was when they brought it out mm. full on in the States. Interesting. Yeah. So that's that's a great conspiracy theory. I don't know too many conspiracy theories myself. Cause, no? I don't know. You don't? No. Okay. I mean, you tell me most of the ones that I even know about. I suppose that's probably true. Yeah. I mean, I watched Welcome to the NHK, but like, I don't know. They mention a lot of conspiracies, but it's not, like, really explaining them or anything, so. Well, you know Do you know the... any? Aliens. You know, Aliens. You know what they say? 9-11, 9-1-1, coincidence. <laughs> but, uh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, boy. I've literally heard that. Get too political here. I've oh, literally my. heard that. I just want to put that. But no, I, I, I don't really care yeah. about that mm. particular mm-hmm. thing. Too yeah. much. I don't know too many conspiracy theories either, so. Yeah. Just aliens. Yeah, I'm not a very con- conspiring person. See, I just like to theorize about fictional stuff, so. I don't really know what people theorize about real life. It sounds pretty boring in comparison. Yeah, see, aliens is a fun one, though. Mm-hmm. My conspiracy is that Nick doesn't actually exist. Oh my god. <laughs> but he has a turtle! Maybe the turtle doesn't exist either. I've seen pictures of both him and the turtle. Maybe I just went to the pet shop. And some random guy's house. Yeah. That's not wow. that's not Nick, that's Dave. Nick, please, if you exist, give us a sign. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, small small tangent. Okay. Why haven't we heard of like crop circles in like twenty years? Because no one there's cares less about crops. Them. Now people have mostly conspiracy conspiracy theories about crops in other ways, like like the big, GMOs and things. Yeah, like the GMOs and uh, I forget what the name of the like big company that owns most of the U.S. crops is. But there's a there's big conspiracies about you know capitalism and GMOs and all that junk. So. People don't talk so much about what's happening to the crops, exactly. Yeah. I've never heard of no cancer until they brought the GMOs. Yeah. The next thing you know, boom, lung cancer. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, I guess one of my favorite conspiracy theories would have to be, huh, the gay agenda. (laughs) 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 Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, so recommendations. Yeah. Oh, cuff the gauge in it. No. Uh. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm recommending this week. No. 
that's a weird thing to recommend. Mm. I'm gonna recommend an album. Oh yeah. Yeah. What album? Holy it's, crap! It's, it's called Quebec. Quebec. By Ween. By Ween. Yes. I know who they are yeah. now, as of mm. yesterday. <laughs> they, made, they made Ocean Man. They made Ocean Man. So if you're a Twitch memer, you probably know what that is. Or you've seen the SpongeBob movie, not yeah. the recent one, the older one. The older one. It's yeah. In the credits. Yeah. So Quebec. It's like quirky rock. Quirky this rock. Is the best way I can explain it. That's an interesting way to explain it. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Mollusk is a concept album. It is. That's it's something. about the sea. Yeah. And the creatures in it. I know, but it's like... <laughs> that's a broad concept, though. Yeah. Anyway. But, like, mostly mollusks. So is the Quebec album about Quebec? No. It's not on Spotify, sadly. Ah. Yeah. That's too bad. Is it on Google Play Music? I didn't check. I'm gonna check right now. Oh, so it's... I, I don't know. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's probably in your local record store, go there. Oh, yeah, it is. It's, in that Not. place that makes us dizzy. No, I mean, like, wherever you are, there's probably a local record place going. Mm. Yeah. I can never find their albums anywhere. Hmm. It's like trying to find a Doug and the Slugs album in a mid-sized Canadian town. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> no, Quebec's not on here. Fortunate. Because nobody likes Quebec. Yeah. <laughs> oh! It's Ontario on there, at least. <laughs> there's, like, a live album somewhere in Ontario, I think. Oh, yeah. But, uh... Yeah, there no. you go. Quebec. It's on YouTube. The full album's on YouTube, so you can just check it oh. out there. Well, there you go. It's free anyway. Mm. Boom. So, recommendations? We should probably close the vault. No. no Our vault just, was just silent today. We didn't just, even get to hear us opening it. It's still open, dog. But, uh, I'm going to close it. It's fine. I'm going to... I'm going to recommend people go to their local record stores on Record Store Day. When oh, is yeah. that? It's the Saturday, the 20-something. Mm-hmm. What, you had a calendar on that? Uh, yeah. Somewhere else? Yeah, just a sec. I'll pop one out while you guys... I'm getting one right now. It's... <sighs> okay, it's a Saturday, the 22nd of April. There you this go. Year. Nice. Um, yeah, there's plenty of good... Records. Yeah, those. Yeah. It's a Bill Ooh. Evans little thing I'm going to probably pick up. Mm-hmm. They're also doing Space Jam on vinyl. Yeah. Which is pretty wild. Is, like, the vinyl, like, a basketball? No, I don't think it is. <laughs> that would be kind of amazing. Yeah, I don't... If it was at least orange, like... <laughs> yeah, I don't think that it is, but, like, may... I don't know. That'd be something. But I don't think that it is. Yeah. Um... Yeah, they're re-releasing the Blade Runner soundtrack on vinyl, which is Ooh. extremely rare. That's cool. Well, at least it's valuable. Too I bad guess. it probably doesn't have the dove on it. I mean, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, lots of good stuff. Mm -hmm. M many, many music for people. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, also I'm going to recommend the show about the show. Oh, yes, that's a show. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you want to describe it? The, so, show. the show about the show. The show about the show is by a guy, Kave Zahedi, I don't know. The Z-A-H-E-D-I. Yeah. Um, or in the States, Z. Anyway. Etc. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a show. It's only like six episodes, 13 minutes each. And like they're releasing it as a movie this year for probably awards reasons, I hope. Mm, that would be interesting. But, uh, yeah, it's a show that's about the making of its previous episode. Yeah. So every episode, they talk about the one before. So the first one, they just talk about pitching the show. And then the second episode, he talks about how they what they had to do to get <laughs> the actors that he got to play people that he pitched the show to and how that went down and then so on and oh so on. And, gosh. like, you know, his... You know, family life is there too, and descent into madness, basically. Yeah, and like by the end, they're t mostly talking about what the reactions to the last episode were, and <laughs> what kind of problems he ran into because they put a certain thing in the show, and oh boy, all the stuff, and like I guess there was a longer and longer period of time between the last few episodes being released. So hmm. yeah, it's interesting, really friggin' great. So like, how does a show like that even end? You know? Oh, it ends perfectly. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. 
Maybe spoiler alert. No, yeah, it ends, it ends really good. Okay. I mean, it's only like, I don't know, it's not that long, so mm-hmm. it's probably like an hour and a half-ish. Isn't it on YouTube or yes, something? Yes, it's available on YouTube. Yeah. All six episodes on a playlist even, so you don't even wow. have to do anything. Convenient. Yeah. So, yeah, check that out. It's great mm-hmm. and clever and all, all of those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, I'm going to recommend an anime that I know that you've seen recently. Hey. <laughs> well, hey, it's that anime I haven't seen. <laughs> I've been watching anime recently. <laughs> yeah. Anime is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to recommend Anohana. Um, I forgot the name of the flower we saw that day. I'm pretty sure that's the English title. It's a pretty good uh, pretty good show. It's like 12 it's a short series. It's just like 12 episodes, no extra seasons or anything, no cliffhangers involved. And it just basically gives you the feels. If you want some feels, here's some feels. It's real sad. It's real sad. It's real sad. Yep. It will make you cry and it's pretty good. And basically, it's just a bunch of like high school kids and one of one of them died while they were younger and she kind of comes back as a ghost or something it's not very clear and they have to like figure out her unfinished business and it's pretty interesting it will give you the feels it's got pretty good animation and stuff too it's an attractive to look at series and uh yeah it's good right on yeah i think it's available on crunchyroll yeah I know it used to be on Netflix, too. I don't know if it is anymore. I think it was. It's unclear. In any case, it's good. Check it out. If you can't find it, just shoot me an email and I will find it for you. Like, it's no problem. <laughs> just sail the high seas with your parrot and your eye patch. What? Hmm? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I thought you were, like, quoting Mollusk or something. No. Maybe you are. Who knows? So that that about wraps it up, I well, guess. The sea creatures, not about pirates. Gosh. I know, but shh. Oh. Shh. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, that about wraps it up for this episode of Bob Too Late Podcast. If you guys want to send us questions again or comments, uh, you can do so at our email, which is up too late podcast at gmail dot com, or our Twitter, which is at up too late pod. Uh, yeah. Do it. Do it. And maybe we'll get you some fan art or something, because you guys aren't sending us fan art. Gosh. Or Sonic OCs. Yeah. Hey, that's what I meant. I'm going to draw some Sonic OCs. Nice. You don't even get to pick what animal you're going to be. Gosh. The hedgehog. <laughs> Nick would probably be a turtle, because that's the only animal-related thing I know about him. There's no turtles in Sonic. What are you talking to- Stop it. Dude, do you think hedgehogs go fast in real life? I don't think it's a problem for They're them so to fast. be a turtle. There's turtles in Sonic. Who's a turtle in Sonic? Like the turtle ships in Adventure 2. Wait, what? Where's what? that heroes? I think that's heroes. I'm All confused. Right. There's turtle ships. Turtle ships? Yeah, it's like just giant ships made of turtles. Well, they're not made of turtles, they're just turtle okay. shapes. I was like, jeez, dude, that's so or scary. they like cybernetic turtles, I don't know. Oh, I haven't God. played Sonic in a while. That's pretty scary. Um, whew, alright, bye. Bye. <laughs>